Girl, you got your reading glasses? Because it's time to go in. Yes. Shay comes from reading. Reading came first. The library's open. It's time to read. The library is open. It's time to read. so stupid she stood at a stop sign and waited for it to say go hey yo your mama's so cheesy she make cheese doodles oh your mama is so ugly she got rolled over at the bus stop oh. Your mama is so stupid that Dumbo is named after <laughs> Your mama's so bad when she jumped in the air, she got stuck. <laughs> So fat when she put on a red t shirt, everyone says, Hey, cool, hey, <laughs> Your mother's so black that you can't even see her in the light, that you have only seen is her teeth. Oh, 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 oh. Your mama's weave is so shit, even Ray Charles can see it. Oh. Oh. Damn, you got it. Your mama's so fat. She's got enough crud in her underwear to put Betty Crocker out of this. If you say and I'm not over, then whatever do you mean? Colgate smile, gleam, tan from the Philippines. So fresh, so clean, keep the girls gagging. Honey, I was born this way, bitch, this ain't no maybe.
about actors. Let's talk about actors who are lazy and trifling, have no craft, can't build a character, don't know how to get off book with the scene to save their lives. You cast them because you see something in them, but they see nothing in themselves. They see nothing in themselves and that's why they act. 
because they can assume as many identities as they'd like to replace the void happening on the inside. <sighs> I hate actors. So why am I a filmmaker? Gonna give us your headshot and resume. Shot? Well, I just have a few questions first. <laughs> okay, shoot. Uh, what camera are you shooting in? What is your acting background, education, and qualifications? Uh, <laughs> what's your shooting schedule like? I yeah. Um, why do you need to know that right now? You do realize that you're auditioning for us, and based off your performance, we will then proceed to tell you what you need to know should you be invited on to the production. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, what are you going to be doing for us today? My name is Lauren Ashby, and I'll be doing a monologue from A Raisin in the Sun as Benita, and a song from, um, um, um... Uh, no, you won't. Next. I came here all the way from Astoria. The least you could do is see me. A hopeless lead devoted to you. Next. I'm Nadia. Where do you want me? Well, for starters, can you... Can you put those away? Sorry, boys. Seems I've come a little undone. Oh. Are you ready for me? Oh, Poppy. Oh, Poppy. We're getting ready to film Deep Rope Nine. Oh, oh thank you. you. Thank you. That that's Nadia. That is enough. Okay, stop. All right. Uh, what Nadia? What's your schedule like? I'm wide open. Bye, gentlemen. Hello. Uh, hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Wonderful. Yes. What is your monologue selection? It's a monologue from a gospel play called Mama, My Man Done Burnt Up the Cornbread. We're ready when you are. Okay, great. Yeah. Juliet graduate, this opportunity means the world to me. Have a nice day. Thank you. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> cool. So, um, what's your name and what are you going to be doing for us today? Well, I'm Mark Blackenstock, and before we go any further, I want to know if this is paying. 
because I've invested a lot in myself and I'm not working for free. That was a great monologue, but don't, don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> but wait, uh... We've been waiting outside for an hour, all of us, it's, it's hot, there's no air conditioning, it's the middle of fucking July, and you know, we're all, we're all struggling actors here, we have no money and we, we, we... Do you not understand how I'm feeling right now? Do you not feel that way when you're sitting out there and nobody even fucking sees you and you sing two notes and then they're like, bye? Do you, do you not get it? Can I please just, just be with me here? Now that was a fucking brilliant performance. Hello. Hi, how are you? How are you? My name is Jason. Oh, good to meet you. Nita, you know, let me tell you, I got one of these things outside. It was on the coffee table. I'm just going to put it right here, okay? Oh, okay, great. My resume, come, come, follow the right Awesome. Okay, so what are you going to be doing for us today? I'm going to do a little insert from Romeo and Juliet. I think you know it, right? Probably. That guy Hamlet, Shakespeare, something like that. Yes. Okay, okay. so we're ready whenever you are. Okay. Oh, Romeo? Romeo? Where are you, boo? <laughs> oh, you coming now? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I'm coming. I'll be right there. Oh, that was... Jason, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you for the opportunity. I love the building. I love the white walls. They're so great. Yes. Thank you. All right. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what are you going to be performing for us today? You're all going to die. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thanks. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Again. I'm wonderful. So what are you going to be doing for us today? I'm going to do a monologue about my vagina. Oh, we're ready whenever you are. Okay. My vagina is so black and beautiful. When he came and he touched my beautiful cocoa. Oh, that made me feel so good. I would mind and I rejoice every night and day. Thank you. Short time, but we both have something in common. Yes. 
We are into health. We are into health. And yes, you are. and I both have a crazy schedule. Yes. But I know what I do. But what about you? How do you manage to eat well? Think about the things that you put on your body <sighs> with, with today's lifestyle. It's hard, you know, because it's so easy to just get like a 99 cent burger, or like, you know, a slice of pizza for a dollar. You know what I mean? Like all the terrible stuff is so accessible. And it seems like the good stuff is either expensive or it takes a while to get it. So what I've one thing that I've started doing is just packing vegetables and fruits in my bag. Like honestly, like I'll take kale, a bag of spinach, some apples, or whatever, and just have it with me. Um, so that's one trick that I kind of do to try to stay sort of detoxifying and, and eating healthy and stuff like that. But it's hard. It's it's not always easy to do. Yeah, and you know, you, you really have to think about detoxification is one thing, pH is another. Let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to keep your body alkaline and what is it that you eat to keep that body alkaline? Well, one thing that I do that's a really, really good trick that you guys should try in that term is to add a little bit of lemon juice to your water. Perfect. Um, it keeps you, what, how do you say it, Alkal alkaline? Alkaline. Alkaline. Alkalinized eyes, whatever. <laughs> alkaline. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and, let's, and let's explain what that means. The, the body, if it's cancer, if it's got acidic in it, it's very prone towards cancer, things like that. Cancer loves an acidic body. So we try to keep our pH, our alkalinity balanced so that we can hopefully present major diseases, mm -hmm. right? So your trick is perfect, lemon. How about wheatgrass? Well, you know, I'm not too big of a wheatgrass person. Um, I, I should be, but I don't really do it too often. I'm all about kale, though. Yeah, like kale. Like, I live what? for kale. I kale is kale. good. Kale is good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Some people don't like the taste of it, but it's good for well, you. Well, it's an acquired taste. I mean, it's kind of like beer. Like, nobody starts off liking beer normally, but you drink enough of it and you start to <laughs> acquire the taste. So that's how kale is with me. Like, I didn't like it at first, but now I like it, you know? And what do you do to make sure that you stay balanced? I mean, you talked about the things that you bring. Mm -hmm. But you need protein, so what do you do to make sure you get the right proteins in your body? Well, I, you know, I'm really just now at this period of my life. I'm 28, about to be 29. I'm going to be 30 next year, which is crazy to me. Um, I'm getting to a place where I'm clearly not in my early 20s anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel it <laughs> when, <laughs> you know, like, if I, if I party too hard, I definitely feel it the next day. I can't just eat fast food and be fine and not feel bloated or gassy like I used to. So I'm getting to the point now where it's very obvious to me that I have to start taking care of myself in a different way than I did when I was a little bit younger. So it's all new for me. I I'm experimenting with different things. But as I said, um, I'm always trying to eat raw vegetables. I juice quite a bit. I have a juicer at home. You know, things like that. Juicing is not always that convenient, though. Um, but... It's a learning curve. I, I'm really learning my body in a, in a different way now, you know. And, and also, let's just talk a little bit about oxygenation because that's something that a lot of diseases don't like real good oxygen in the mm -hmm. body. So do you think about that at all? I do. I think that it's funny. Working, stretching is really, really good mm -hmm. for that, actually, in, in terms of not just, like, what you eat. But so much air and gas exactly. and things is just trapped, especially in your core, because it's an area that we tend to ignore unless we're trying to get, like, sexy abs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I feel like when people are like, yeah, I'm training for my core, it's all about, like, a flat stomach opposed to just, like, actually, like, your internal organs are based there. Like, your gut is such an important thing to ring out. So, um, so I, I do a series of stretches. I do yoga when I can. Um... I'm in a show right now, so I've been stretching and dancing a lot more lately, so I've been a lot better about it. You know, but you do I'm so much dancing when you're in your show performing out there. Mm -hmm. So do you try to do beyond – I know the stretching. I mean, obviously, I think – I don't think that people put enough, you know, a realization in how important stretching is. Right away they think that they have to do – the lifts and the weights and everything else and and really they should start with the stretching mm -hmm. so what what else do you do beyond the dancing or is that pretty much your exercise well you know i'm one of these people that will be really inspired and go to the gym for like you know a month and then like not go <laughs> <laughs> for two months and i'm i'm really bad i have to do things i have to incorporate exercise into my everyday life Right. So there have been times where I purposely not bought a Metro card and forced myself to walk everywhere. There have been times where, of course, when I'm training for a show, I'll be in really, really good shape. 
or you know I do different things I take different classes dancing and stuff like that if it's if it's not really a part of the things that I'm forced to do I can be bad with it so I try to always create an avenue for exercise in my life now do you think also about the things that you the shampoo that you use and the conditioner and I things actually like that? I do I I'm pretty organic with the stuff that I put on my body I'm all about the black soap the shea butters coconut oil in my hair I do olive oil at night I do egg white facials um, yeah I do a lot of different things I don't really tend to um, mess with the cosmetics and phar pharmaceuticals too heavy yeah. I, I don't think that people I, I, you can't really say that because nowadays people are getting more educated about that but everything we put on our body these days if you don't go the way that you're talking about everything we got we put on our bodies has something in it that we don't necessarily need and you know you don't always read the labels or even know what the labels mean but there's so many different <laughs> you know cancerous things and it was all types of we were on the bus earlier today and like someone pulled up on Facebook that there's actually like bull sperm in Red Bull. <laughs> I'm like, really? And like we Googled it and it was true. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so much stuff that it's put into the food that we eat, into the makeup that we put on, into the the lotions that we use that you have no clue you're putting into yourself and onto yourself. It's really important that you educate yourself on these products because you know, you know. I ho think the whole thing about genetically modified mm -hmm. organisms. Now they have products out there that everything that's being grown into the ground is ending up with these. They're actually poisons that are going on these things. So it's hard for us to get away from all of this. Well, stuff. it's really interesting. Like a friend of mine actually was working for a, a grocery company that works with farmers that package vegetables and fruits, and. You know, half of the stuff that they say is organic is not. It's the same thing. It's just packaged differently. You know, it's we're getting to a point where, I mean, nobody should be ignorant anymore. With Internet and with the technology, there's no reason why you shouldn't know a lot of these things. Um, but we really are in a day and age where you have to look. Like, like what was it, Simply Orange or, like, these Simply yes. Drink products that are supposed to be so organic and everything are actually no different than sodas. Like, it's Coca-Cola owns it, and they're bottling flavors that make you think that it's organic, and it's not. So, you know, in terms of the, the health is so interesting because people are like, oh, I'm gluten-free, I'm vegan, I'm this, I'm that. You really don't know what you're doing. You really don't know what the fuck you're putting in your body at the end of the day. You could say, oh, girl, yeah, I right. eat this, that, and third, <laughs> but you could be eating, you know, bull, you yeah, know, nut. I don't know. That's so. not a joke. Trust me, that is not a neck. joke. <laughs> well, I'm what an sort of artist are you? I'm an actor. Okay. Um, primarily film and TV, but one thing that um, I've done consistently for years now is I stopped drinking soda. I completely wow. got that out of my life, and my skin's wow. clear. Yeah. I feel better. Thank you. So, okay, so you've gotten rid of soda. Can you next? Okay. I'm Caitlin. I'm an actor as well. Um, I'm a big gym freak. I try to go to the gym every day. Realistically, it's like five, six days a week. That's not bad. That's yeah. not bad. I'm actually transferring my day job status, hopefully by the end of summer, from a restaurant to a personal trainer. Awesome. So, amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody need some help? <laughs> I'll be in business. <laughs> Hello, my name is Cherie, and I'm an actress, and I'm just now getting into the whole health thing, honestly. I just turned 22, and I, I know it's still young to most people, but I've been skinny all my life, so I haven't really paid attention <laughs> to, like, what I put in my body, really. Mm. Um, but now I'm just starting to cut out chips and Eatos and Cheetos and all those things, and <laughs> I'm eating seaweed and um, the Trader Joe's pea chips. Like, I, that's, like, one step for me, and just drinking more. You know, it's something you have to be careful about. When you are thin, it's a lot easier not to. Because mm -hmm. yeah. being thin doesn't Definitely. always mean you're healthy. And I've always yeah. known that I wasn't healthy, but Definitely. I'm just now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Well, as long as you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm Derek. I'm an actor also. And I think it's pretty much the same as everybody else. I definitely cut out 
um, cookies, chips, and all of that. And it was very, very difficult, like very <laughs> difficult. But I think after I go, got over the hump, I it, like it, I, it, I just can't eat it anymore. Like it doesn't taste good. Like McDonald's, like none of that just doesn't taste good at all anymore. So. Hi, I'm Alicia, and I'm a and I sing and do lots of different things. But staying healthy, it's a challenge. Um, especially, I'm I'm in a show right now that tours a lot. So we're constantly traveling and on the go, and we're kind of at the mercy of like when lunchtime is and who's providing the food and what the venue gives us. And a lot of times, sometimes it's great and it's balanced and it's perfect, but sometimes you know they try to go the cheapest route, which is usually not the healthiest. So I think you have to find a balance. Like you have to really listen to your body and what it needs. And if you're hungry, like you gotta eat what you gotta eat. But when you're feeling like bloated, you kind of just listen to your gut because you know you're gonna come across bad for you food. Like that's just that's just gonna happen in this life. And you know, try to try to let your cravings tell you like what's the healthy what's the healthy aspect of that craving, and right. go there. So uh, is it safe to assume that all of you guys keep a pretty busy schedule? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So <laughs> be honest with us and talk about how much they drink. <laughs> well, this is this is, but this is the New York. This is the New York way. I'm from the South, where when something good happens, when you're happy, when you're sad, you go and you get something to eat. Here in New York, everybody wants to drink. It's so real, though. Like it, you know, everybody wants to just go to Red Lobster in Atlanta and celebrate. <laughs> But here, it's interesting. It's like, you know, we, we celebrate with drinking. Even just social settings, it's like, you know, instead of meeting at the park or meeting yeah. at a restaurant, it's like, let's meet at the bar. Happy hour is until yeah. 9 or 10. Happy and, hour. And, and honestly, even just in business, you know what I mean? I find that people want to have business meetings over drinks. So it's just it's a different level of alcohol consumption in, in this particular city. And... um. So I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not an alcoholic. Um, <laughs> by any means, but I've I have started. I have began to drink a lot more once moving here. Do you Absolutely. guys? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think just the stress of being an artist and like trying to maintain a nine to five and trying to maintain some semblance of a career that we're all trying to build. Mm -hmm. It gets very very stressful and. Bars are Bar great, everywhere. are yeah. everywhere, and they're a great and not necessarily very healthy stress reliever. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually I never had a drink drink until I moved to New York. Oh, but wow, I mean, really? like I was, yeah, I moved to New York at eighteen. I made it till nineteen without having a drink. Oh, but wow. um, I I mean I don't drink. I think it's like that not much. that much is different to us than yeah, it is to what, other people. What's considered not that much to you? Well, what's considered not that much at home mm -hmm. would be, oh, I have a, a nightcap. At, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, you have a drink a day. I feel like here, this lifestyle is very, you know, it, if you don't have a habit and it's like, you know, you're just sort of going with the flow, I feel like it's like you might have a business meeting at the W Hotel and the client buys you a drink there and then you might meet with some other friends for dinner and then you have a drink there and then you might go to a bar and have two more drinks mm -hmm. and then if you feel good you might go to another <laughs> bar and have another <laughs> drink and then if you have you know something at home you might drink that so and this is typical for people mm -hmm. like it's typical yeah. for New Yorkers to have six to eight drinks a night or every other night. Like, this is actually not like, oh, you're an alcoholic, you have a problem, you need to stop. This is just maintaining the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So, he, like, at home, it's like, oh, okay, that's not bad. You had a drink. Mm -hmm. Here, it's like, oh, you had eight. Okay, cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, could you make it home? Did you, you know, did you throw up? I feel like that's the mark. Like, how fucked up are you? Um, they don't have to drive in New York City, so they figure they yeah. can, right? That's another big thing. Yeah. <laughs> Every springtime, the lovers come out.
This is the only chariot I have for you now. You just wait and see. One day, I promise you, I'm gonna give you the world. Cuddling, holding hands, kissing. I see love. I see stars. I see rainbows. <laughs> Uh, who's daddy's little girl? I'm your little girl. Who's daddy's little girl? I'm your little girl. Say it again. Say it again. Making everyone single nauseous. I see light. I see everything. Ugh, get a room. I see puke. Get, get a room. Now let's see when the tables turn. <laughs> about Aries. Freedom, spontaneity, and keeping them on their feet will turn them on. Aries is a lot like Libra in the fact that they enjoy lavishing in the finer things. Whether it fully functions at top capacity is sometimes irrelevant as long as it matches the popular opinion of what is sexy, fly, and great. Despite this, they are surprisingly complex and not shallow. Aries is very intellect driven, concerned about life, social and political affairs, and even if not transparent, deeply caring to what's going on. Oftentimes passionately discussing topics near and dear to their heart, playfully debating or just sharing is more erotic and romantically endearing than simply being physical. Aries men are great at separating love from lust and can often be condescending to anyone that gives sex too easily. They may engage for the moment, but once they get what they came for, the conquest is often soon over, if that's all it was. Aries enjoys the innocent, sweet side of sexuality. Deep inside, they want to create that first time high school love all over again. Gentle touches, sitting an inch too close, looking deep into eyes, soft caresses, spontaneous kisses are so satisfying and gratifying to Aries. They can sometimes be aloof when they are actually deeply stimulated. Aries likes to feel in control, but also wants to feel swept off their feet. This can cause internal confusion. Do not act disinterested. Try to manipulate or play games to create feelings of longing, jealousy, or comparison with Aries. These tactics will not spark passion. They will backfire on you and shut them down. Once shut down and feeling rejected, good luck getting them back. Due to Aries' sensitive and fragile nature and strong affinity to feeling misunderstood, left out and on the cusp of being unaccepted, you won't win with anything other than strong compassion and straightforward reassurance. Aries takes pride in doing things well, including being lovers and friends. If Aries is open and honest, they are amazing. Though Aries can default into passive-aggressive tendencies, being judgy and overthinking things can easily be sorted out by taking ownership of their feelings and talking. They can make great lovers, partners, and friends.
and shooting. Hi everybody, we're here live at Michiko Studios and I have some lovely ladies here with me tonight. Oh yes I do. Introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Christina Jimenez. And I'm Samaya Osborne. So you guys are new to Suburban Underground. How has your experience been thus far? Are you enjoying it? What's been some of your favorite stuff that we've got going on? Everything's my favorite. <laughs> uh, I have the exact same answer. I'm really excited about a lot of the hosting segments we've been doing and about Experience New York, a clip that is going to be seen on Suburban Underground. And of course, the legendary DJ Stereotype over here. Give it up, everybody! Just to do a little bit of a revisitation on that question, I'm excited about Brian, DJ Stereotype Wade. Oh. Hey. I'm so excited about y'all. I don't think we've had much of an opportunity to actually introduce major players of the band yet, so I want to do that really quick while we're waiting. So, introduce yourself to the camera. Don is, I play guitar. No. Mm -hmm. You follow me. And who is this guy over here? I'm Bobby, I play drums. Cool. You gotta come a little deeper. Man. What's up, man? What's your name? What do you do? Kevin. Way whatever this is. <laughs> Which is like a drum machine. And who are you, man? Real talk. On the bass. And, and over here in the corner, come on in. Hi. The loveliest lady in the band. We have, who are you? Yes. Now this, this is Suburban Underground. This is what we do. Yeah. This is how it works. We're so excited to be broadcast with Brick, also known as Brooklyn Free Speech. We have so much more coming the rest of this season. If you like what you see, just keep tuning on in. Hi, my name is Christina Jimenez and I am an official VJ for Suburban Underground TV and you are watching Experience New York. Today we're going to be checking out Smorgasburg, a food festival where vendors from all over the city come out to let everybody see what they have to offer. This food festival started up its new season April 5th and 6th and will be lasting until November of 2014. Check it out on Saturdays in Williamsburg and Sundays here under the Brooklyn Bridge at Pier 5. talking to one of our new vendors this season, Matt Swanson, who recently started up his own company called Gooey and Co. Matt, can you tell us a bit more about your new offering? Uh, absolutely. Um, Gooey and Company uh, makes St. Louis style gooey butter cake. Mm -hmm. It's a cake that I grew up eating in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, my recipes are made kind of the way my mom made the cake, which is a two layer cake with a baked in cream cheese frosting on top. Uh, the only difference is my mom used cake mix, margarine, and Philadelphia cream cheese, and I thought I could do a little bit better than that. So uh, we use um, organic buttermilk, we use Ronnie Brook Farm organic butter, and we also use um, Ben's cream cheese, which is this mysterious cream cheese that originated on the Lower East Side um, in the 1960s. So uh, we, get the, we get the cream cheese from Murray's. Hey guys, so we are here with Jen at Hipcorn, and she's going to tell us a bit more about how she started out. So, um, I was living in Chicago, and my brother came to help me move, and I had these kernels. I was working at health food stores, and um, these kernels, the Hipcorn is really small. It's a mini kernel popcorn, and the hole is easier on your take stomach. And so we made it, and we sort. We were moving apartments, and we literally made like batch after batch after batch. Um, and he was like, "We should sell this." And then two years passed, and we were doing two different things. And then we drove across country, and we decided to like go all in and do it. And we started up, and then um, it's been two years, and we're doing. It's going really well, and it's nice. It's nice that we can put out like a non-GMO product, a vegan, gluten-free. Um, it's organically grown. It's not certified because the farm, you know, it's expensive. Yeah, certification, uh, but it is online. And then we also sell um, in about six 
60 stores and 17 Whole Foods. Um, most of the stores are like Manhattan, um, Brooklyn, New Jersey, Connecticut, Philadelphia, but we're as far as like Chicago, Virginia, and Maine.
got your family and they need you there Though I try to resist and get last on your list I mean, I'm usually definitely. I could never even drink eight drinks. I'd be dead. Thank <laughs> me. No one wants to see me after. I don't. I've never had eight drinks. No. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> he has a problem. <laughs> I'm a little worried. That was an inner monologue. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I had three glasses of wine one night, and I was like, whew. I was like Don't the most, yeah, it. no, I, I'll probably consume alcohol like maybe three times a week, okay. three, maybe four, oh, it's and it's all. not a lot, yeah. no, I can't, I'll die. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm similar to her, like I, I moved to New York when I was 18, and I didn't really start to drink until my 21st birthday, honestly, mm -hmm. and um, I still have never been like, throw up you know, black and out Never type drunk. So um, I, I think I drink mainly just on, on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and my, my maximum is two. On my birthday, I might drink three. But yeah, I'm a lightweight. Wow. Yeah. Um, I think like as a, as a gay man, you tend, like in the city, you tend to, <laughs> you know a lot of people, you tend to like be friends with a bar, like somebody at a bar, like a bartender or something yeah. like that. So I think like my worst moment was, it was like Cosmo Friday, like friends, I had six, six, and they're very strong. In one sitting? Yeah, so had six. So I was throwing up all the way home, but oh. I think oh. now, like you, like I'm 28, 29, be 30, like I can't do that anymore, so I'm, like, I'm, I have a death, death, like an irrational fear of hangovers. Do you know drinking. eating a potato after you come home will save you from a hangover? I guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> I swear to you, if you drink too much, you go home and you put a damn potato in the microwave for eight minutes. You eat her before she. You eat her before you go to sleep, and you'll be fine in the morning. I will try. I that. promise. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the standard of living in New York City. When I first. When I first moved here, I was, <laughs> when I first, the first summer I ever came here, I had an internship, right? And I thought that Manhattan okay. was 42nd Street. You know what I mean? Like I just thought that it, you know, I thought it was Sex in the City or something. <laughs> so I, I was shocked, because where I'm from, even the projects are nicer than like the shit that we pay top dollar here yeah. for, seriously. <laughs> Wall-to-wall -wall carpets, central heat and air, wow. you know, <laughs> you might have some molding on your counters, even if you're in the hood. So to come here and to sort of be like, damn, people are paying this much. For a cubbyhole. For that, <laughs> you know, it was really, really sort of shocking to me. And for a while, I was a little resentful of it. I was mm -hmm. just like, this is so, you know, so how do you guys feel about your living situations and, and, <laughs> and all of that? Roomating past college, all that kind of stuff. Like... Where are you with your living situation in tandem with, with how hard you work? And please introduce yourself and what you do. Uh, Anthony T. Solano, thanks for having me, B. Definitely glad to be here. Um, still a big question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, honestly, the, f the biggest part of having your standard of living match, uh, you know, how you work and what you do and who you work with is flexibility. Um, you have to understand that if what you're chasing is what you love, then you have to be able to sacrifice and be flexible with 
life circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be comfortable and understand that you may have to live out a duffel bag for a month or two. And with that being said, you have to be creative with your outfits, especially if you're going to certain casting calls or certain auditions. Are you speaking from experience? I'm, I'm speaking definitely. So you have you have to be able to match and understand that. Hey, I, I'm I may be sleeping on a, a, a cot this night and have two or three people over because a roommate may have somebody over. It's really about uh, flexibility and being able to move in and out um, mentally more than more than physically. Definitely, definitely. Brian, just a quick question for you though. What when you first moved here, you had what twenty five dollars? Twenty. Oh, twenty dollars. <laughs> okay, so how did you survive? Uh, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> you you know what's interesting is you find yourself challenge. What New York has done for me is that it's when I'm faced with a challenge, it's very, um, you know, do or die. It's sink or swim here. Mm -hmm. There's no in between. There's no middle. And when you hit the pavement, it's just like okay, like I can't lay here because I'm gonna get mugged. Get the fuck up and figure <laughs> something out. You know. So it's. That's really, I have just, you, like you said, you make sacrifices. You know, I've lived with people that I didn't want to live with. I have worked jobs that I didn't want to work. I have, um, I've, you know, I've moved around hella times. Just whatever opportunity presented itself to me um, in terms of survival, I took it. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it's way too long of a story for me to get into. But, you know. You, it's literally that that phrase "do what you gotta do" is just so used and it's so cliche, but it's real here. It's so true. You know. Hello, I'm Sabaya Osborne. I'm a singer, dancer, actress. Um, wow. In terms of the standard of living versus what you have to do to hustle for that dollar, it's just to me it's unattainable and it's ridiculous. Um, I feel like we live, it's like the tale of two cities, the have mm -hmm. and the have nots. And just the stark contrast, the difference between what the haves have and what the have nots, it's just ridiculous. It's like, can there be a buffer, please? Um, it's almost as if the middle class or um, the emerging artist doesn't exist. There's no space for that. Um, that said, worked three jobs at a time, you know, not slept, been hospitalized because of that, yeah. Um, slept on floors, couches, sublet, <laughs> you name it, I've pretty much had to do Word. it. So uh, to reiterate, I, I was just going to say that it's, it's shocking what it costs to live here. And at the same time, it's, it's amazing what you get used to paying. So to live here and um, you know to echo what you said it, it, you do what you got to do and it is what it is yeah. and it's nice to kind of uh, be involved in these communities of people artists um, fellow actors artists musicians etc that that can kind of uh, get together and share war stories commiserate <laughs> <laughs> build these pick each other up etc have a drink, <laughs> <laughs> or, or two or three, or, or, two. Three, or, or eight, Five. or eight, <laughs> and maybe a potato afterwards. <laughs> there you go. But that's. Yeah. I'm Ashley, and I'm an actor, and even I'm 20, so I can't really have the drink with you guys legally. <laughs> but <laughs> I've been fortunate to be in a dorm because I go to college, but I do have three roommates, and it seems like they're rolling in the dough. Like I'm on scholarship and I can't mess up anything, like I can't get a lower than a B in a class. But there was a funny story that everyone was going to the Justin Timberlake concert in um, like last month at Madison Square Garden. And I was like, yeah, I would love to go, but I ain't got money for that. So everything here is just so expensive. Like I'm like surviving off of goldfish Right. and like almonds and stuff like that. That's terrible for my health, but the girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. <laughs> 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 
Hi, so my name's Carlo. Um, I'm a filmmaker. I'm actually with uh, Steadfast Production, so that's a bit of a plug for um, our production company. But uh, I raise that because um, I've been very lucky. Moving to New York a year ago, I'm actually living with my best friend from fil film school in Sydney. Um, we're business partners um, and we're, we're best friends and, and house, housemates. So um, we've been very lucky. Um, Jessica has actually been in Williamsburg for, for three years. So we have a rent stabilized apartment. So, you know, we can sort of, we still have to be frugal. And the thing is, um, I think you have to see the, the advantages in, in, in the situations that you find yourself in. Absolutely. So we're in a five, uh, five story walk up. So, you know, that, that's great for your, your buns. You know, you don't have to go to the gym. Um, and, and as filmmakers, you also have to be resourceful. So we've used our apartment as a film set um, in, the, in the short film that, that we filmed last year. So you just make do um, and, and you, you celebrate all of the, the graces that you're given, the blessings that you're given with rent stabilized apartments. Yeah. And then you also try and stretch it out and, and, and be resourceful. I am Rachel Myers, I'm an actor. And man, Patrick said it perfectly. You get so comfortable paying a certain amount of money to live in not the largest amount of space. Mm -hmm and you're basically working just to afford that. So anything above that, you choose where that money goes. You know, you have to prioritize. It's very difficult, especially if, you know, depending on how materialistic a person you are or how social a person you are, you know, you have to choose sometimes whether you wanna go out for those drinks or you wanna get new headshots. You know, what is more important at this time? And sometimes the drinks win because <laughs> You didn't get the job this afternoon, right. so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but that's my two cents. Just eighty twenty. Hi, I'm Megan Murphy. Um, yeah, the cost of living here is really, really high, and like back home where I'm from in Alabama, you can get a pretty decent one-bedroom apartment for like two hundred fifty dollars a month rent <laughs> and, <laughs> and <laughs> it's tr well yeah, in my little town anyway that, huh? but right. I'm <laughs> but here I'm paying just to rent a room in an apartment it's like nine hundred thirty dollars a month and that's and two here the minimum wage is so low and the difference between the minimum wage and the cost of living it's like what are you supposed to do like it's hard <laughs> that's that's all I got to say about that not really I'm from <laughs> I'm Camaria actor dancer um, I'm from New York um, my whole life New York City so I'm used to spending things here so I, I don't I don't have much of a, as yeah I'm used to it um, I am rent controlled as well so I don't have so I kind of feel bad that I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a duplex. Ooh. Um, <laughs> um, um, I'm Katie. I'm an actor, a musician, and writer. And um, just to kind of maybe bring it up a little, I feel like I've been here four years, and it took a long time to get to a place where I was – and I felt settled and I had roots and I could nest because I, I'm a nester and that's really important to me and I finally feel like I've found that. But within that, I found that as, as soon as I say to the city, which is a very giving city, I think, like as soon as I've said, hey, I'm going to do what I love and I'm going to trust you to give that back to me, like it has, you know, and I've found people who will help me and I've found – someone who will let me stay on their couch for a month and you know in order to buy those headshots you know it's like it, it kind of all comes together in a good way if you give it time and you know your priorities and if your priorities are true I think the city sort of rewards you <laughs> for that 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 is a fabulous note to begin to end the conversation on um yeah, I totally agree with you. What I what I will say for New York City is that I think, well, first of all, I think just in general, everybody is wealthy in some degree. We're not all wealthy financially, but everybody has a wealth 
of something. And normally what that wealth is is what you prioritize. You know, if you prioritize creativity, love, whatever, I think that you attract it. And so for me as an artist, um, I do feel that I have a, a wealth of creativity and art. And there are times where I can't sleep because lyrics are coming to my mind and I just have a an endless banquet of, you know, melodies in my head and I get to meet great people like you guys and you know so New York is a, a fantastic place for I think an artist if you're if you're at a place where you want to gain experience and business and getting money immediately isn't necessarily the focus but getting good getting chops getting experience I think that this is a fabulous place to be so I I think that everybody that wants to come should come and should try it. So with that said, um, we're going to do the New York medley, and that's going to be our way out. I want to thank all of you. Thank you guys so much. You've been a fantastic group of people to talk to. And, um, yeah. everybody this is an original song that I wrote off my mixtape my life in stereo it's called I love New York I don't feel like standing up and giving you my seat on the train what in God's name is that shit color stain and who is that familiar face without a freaking name? We create the pieces of fashion out of the depths of our pain. Set upon sad across, this place is so insane. But I love New York, she's now in my face. A place to live, kids serve all they got to give. Everyone cares enough to not give a shit. Can't get enough of indie pretend. Everybody's a starving artist. But New York, there's no other place. And I complain, and I bitch, and I'm on yeah. But there's no other place. Lady Liberty is our home. A home, a home, a home, a home. yeah. Sing it with me, everybody. I love New York, 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 I love Yo, 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 we got too many roommates, the rent is too hot, can't get the red tents out of my eye, can't get enough money, but you know that I try, we gonna make it, baby, yo, we got to survive, we can get too much, we hate to hear right, we sleeping all day, having fun all night. Lost in this maze, bitch, you better get your life. When nothing is going wrong, you know it's all right. Hey, 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 we on that New York shit. Everybody here on that New York shit. Everybody here on that New York shit. We don't give a damn if you don't like this shit, man. If you love New York, stand up right now. Stand up right now. Woo! If you love New York, stand up right now. Stand up right now. And we complain, and we bitch. We moan to the place. Yeah, I love New York. I love New York. I love New York. Come on over. I love New York. Come on over. Come in the shop. Come here. Hey. I love New York. I love.
and we complain, and we bitch, and we moan, yeah. There's no other place. Lady Liberty is our home. Sing it with me, everybody. The place, Lady Liberty, is our home. One more time. I love New York. I love New York. I love New York. Hey. I love New York. Love New York. Love New York. Thank you guys so much, it's been a blast. Group up!